Okay, in this video, I want to cover vapor blasting carburetors with my DIY vapor blaster, which uses water and fine glass bead. So this is a method I haven't covered on this channel yet. Um, I've done videos in the past, all kinds of videos on methods of cleaning carburetors because that's the worst part. Taking the carbs apart, putting them back together is pretty easy. The cleaning of them is a pain in the ass. I mean, it's very time consuming, especially if you got varnish or crusty stuff. You know, if it's been sitting for a very long time, that to do a thorough job is very difficult to do in a short amount of time. Okay, so I'm always looking for ways to, you know, reduce the time there. So, not, you know, a couple years ago, I came out with a video, best method to clean carburetors, and I used uh, dry soda blast at 80 PSI, so it's basically baking soda, but blasting grade. You blast the carburetors, um, and then you follow it up with cleaning it in the ultrasonic tank. So even if the soda media gets in the carburetors, it will dissolve in water or in the ultrasonic, and you're left with a very fast process, and it looks pretty darn good. Now, the CB750 carburetors that I have here, um, the soda would have cleaned them up, but it wouldn't restore or refinish the look of the carburetors. I mean, they were really corroded, so vapor blasting is perfect for this application, okay? Now, I mentioned dry soda. You can also use the vapor blaster for wet soda, and you're probably thinking, how does that work since it dissolves in water? Well, you just keep dumping media in, and some of it will dissolve and whatever. You just keep dumping more in. It's obviously going to take five, ten pounds more of media in there or whatever, and you can wet soda blast with it, and then you get the benefits of dry soda, but in a wet format. Now, I haven't tried wet soda. However, I've been talking to a bunch of people, and they use it all the time, and they really like the results. And it's, it's nice for uh, quick cleanup, and then you don't have to spend a lot of time cleaning out the media. It dissolves in water, right? So which brings me to my next point. When you vapor blast carburetors, they have to be completely taken apart. Any uh, components left in, or especially rotating components like shafts, choke linkages and stuff, the media will pack in there. Okay, it'll lock it up, and even if it does move, you can hear it crunching in there when you move it after you blast it and after you rinse it thoroughly. So you have to take it apart. And then there's some cases where you wouldn't want to vapor blast. For example, let's say you had a relatively new bike that's been sitting for six to eight months or whatever, and, and the pilot jets are clogged. All you got to do is take those carburetors apart and hit it with a carb, uh, can of carb clean and call it good. Vapor blasting it would be like overkill. I mean, it would just you would just create so much more work for yourself due to cleaning of all the parts, right? So a can of carb clean or ultrasonic, perfect for that. Now let's say the bike was just a little more older and it had a little more crustier stuff in there and there was no finish uh, deterioration on the carburetors, dry soda is perfectly fine. I would use that for that application. But for the CB750, perfect application for vapor blasting because there was a lot of corrosion, dark metal, really crusty stuff, and you need to blast that stuff off. Okay, another application where I wouldn't vapor blast is uh, an FCR carburetor off a four-stroke motocross dirt bike. For example, that uh, carburetor has three parts to it. It has the main body, the mid body, and then the float bowl. I've never taken a mid-body off of one of those carburetors. I hear it's a pain. I think you need special tools, and there's a special gasket in there. So obviously, media is going to get in there, and you'd have to be you'd be forced to take that all apart in order to verify that it all comes out. Another thing is I have clogged the accelerator pump squirt nozzle that shoots fuel into the carburetor. I completely packed that with soda because I didn't mask it off or plug it. So with soda, luckily enough, I was able to free that up in the ultrasonic tank. I just dunked it in there, but it still took a good hour in the tank to break that nozzle uh, passage opening free of the soda media. So if I ever have to do a carb like that again, I as sure as hell going to mask that off with like Play-Doh or clay or masking tape or whatever and 
plug up those orifices so they don't get packed with media. Okay, another thing that I really liked about dry soda is it would rip gasket material off. Silicone or gasket material, the soda just ripped that right off. The vapor blasting, the beads, they just bounce right off of that, so it doesn't take care of that. So that was, that was really nice about the dry soda in that regard. However, the vapor blasting, I mean, it just completely transforms the look of these old carburetors. I mean, it'll just take all the junk off, gives it a nice, uh, you know, satin finish or whatever. So you got that going for it. And it really cleans up the brass components, really brightens it up. So I'll show you that in this video. Okay, so definitely check out the iCard links. Check out the dry soda and ultrasonic. That's a really good method. Uh, you got the vapor blasting method. I also have methods uh, for Berry Man Chem Dip, which by the way, we'll cover in this video. We'll do Berry, chem, Berry Man Chem Dip. We'll do the ultrasonic. I use the Sharper Tech 1220 solution in there. It works awesome. And we'll just compare some other stuff and you can see you know, the different methods of cleaning carburetors. So one last point, if you clean a lot of carburetors, look into dry soda. You can build a setup with the Harbor Freight cabinet, Dust Deputy, all that stuff, you can get it going for about 300 bucks and that works really well. Now for vapor blasting, I got bare bone plans, a parts list, for 550 bucks you could probably get into vapor blasting. It's not going to have a lot of bells and whistles and features, but at least it'll be wet blasting. So that's the entry to those methods. Okay, what I have here is... Um, a Sharper Tech ultrasonic cleaner that I bought used on eBay for like a hundred bucks years ago. Sharper Tech uh, ultrasonic cleaners are really expensive. I wouldn't recommend buying one brand new. Just go buy a Harbor Freight one or one off Amazon or whatever. Um, but anyway, the key to cleaning carburetors is heat. You can see the steam coming up and I got this thing cranked up to like 130 degrees. And what I use as a solution Sharper Tech also has, the, has this stuff called 1220 Carburetor Cleaner Degreaser. You put four to eight ounces of this stuff per gallon. So I just dumped eight ounces in here. Um, I already did one carburetor and you can see how nasty it is already. It used to be pretty clean or green in color. Um, anyway, this stuff is also expensive. It's like 60 or $70 a gallon, okay? But I bought half a gallon and I've had it for years. Um, Anyway, this stuff works great because you drop them in here, you set up the ultrasonic, and you walk away. So let's drop one in really quick. Okay, here's a good one. Uh, this one's really greasy, and it also has really crusty stuff. So I'll, I'll show you that when you put it in here, it's not going to take care of the crusty stuff, but at least it'll prep it prior to vapor blasting, okay? So let's just, uh, man, these are, let me get a better before, and then we'll drop them in. Okay, so here's a before with the ultrasonic. We got crusty stuff. We got a lot of corrosion, and we got a bunch of uh, loose crap. Okay, let's just see how well it does. All right, so we'll drop these two in here. Set it for like 15 minutes. Come back to that in a minute. Next up is this Berryman Chem Dip. This is a, a chemical nasty stuff um, let me get some gloves on all right so this stuff is like okay there's no absolutely no plastic or rubber on this carburetor here's a before it has crusty stuff greasy stuff let's just put it in here Okay, they're pretty much fully submerged. I'll just leave them in there for 10 to 15 minutes. Okay, it's been 15 minutes. Let's yank these out. I also threw in some other parts. And it's hot. Okay, so I'll just take them to the workbench now and uh, I'll take a look. Okay, let's see how the Berry Man Chem Dip is doing. OK, 
Okay, so this obviously I gotta go take to the, uh, I got a rinse tank of water. I'm gonna go and rinse this off and I'll be right back. Okay, so over here, this was an ultrasonic tank. This was the Berry Man. This is untouched here. And then this over here is vapor blasted. Um, actually, I ultrasonic these first to loosen up the grease. But as you can see, the vapor blast finish, it's perfect. It's brand new. Okay. Just takes all that crusty stuff off. It looks really good. Um, again, this is a before. Crusty stuff. Okay, so the Berry Man Chem Dip. Um, it loosened up all the grease. You know, it doesn't remove it, so you have to probably hit this with a solvent tank and a brush and just to loosen it all up. All the crusty stuff is still there, so you have to mechanically remove that somehow. Uh, same in here. And then over here with the ultrasonic, uh, it did a nice job with the grease on the outside. I mean, it loosens the stuff up. I don't, I don't remember how dirty this was, but all the crusty stuff is still there. Look at all that. That does not come off. All right, so here's the ultrasonic. 15 minutes. Um, it looks brighter. The, the solution claims to brighten the aluminum, and it did that. Um, but all this crusty junk will not come out same in there okay next up the berry man i mean doesn't look good at all does it <laughs> so i mean this one's really greasy um, all that grease has been loosened up you can see i wipe my finger on this and it comes right off um, still nothing to do about the crusty stuff Here's untouched, and this one's not too bad as far as the crusty stuff. And here's the vapor blasted finish. Removes everything. All that crusty crap down here was removed, which is awesome because one little piece breaks off and goes and clogs your pilot jet you'll be doing this job again so it's really nice to do a really good job and clean these well and that way there won't be any issues you're not gonna have to take them apart again because who likes doing the job twice or three times so look at that looks real nice all that stuff is gone okay here's an emulsion tube that I vapor blasted you can see it's absolutely clean Here's some that are dirty. So what I wanna do is show you, um, what you can do is take steel wool. So this is triple knot, I'm sorry, quadruple knot. You can go as coarse as double knot. Okay, that'll work for aluminum as well. So this is, this is probably too fine for this, but anyway, I just wanna illustrate uh, what you can do is you can just take a bunch of this And you can just use a lot of elbow grease here. So here's a closer look. Uh, a little bit of steel wool action on that. Here's vapor blast. And here's before. Here are a couple other brass parts. You got a pilot jet and a needle and seat. Uh, you can see that super easy to clean these parts up. And it even flows through the pilot jet and clean that orifice. And that's probably like a 20, 25 thou hole. Just looks really good. Polish the inside of that. Uh, one thing that vapor blasting won't do is remove any gasket material or silicone. Um, so you're going to have to pick that off. Uh, dry soda blast, on the other hand, would rip this stuff right off. Um, sometimes it takes a little bit of effort, but the soda does remove silicone and gasket material, which is awesome because you know how crappy it is to just sit here and pick at it. 